and we can start up world number two. Now, Raisin Ruins is sort of like a desert theme type thing, as you can probably tell. Um, it's it's all right. The atmosphere is pretty good, but the music in some of the stages is really, really good. So this is a fun one. This one almost kind of has like a country western feel to it. <laughs> but All right, so here we go. Yeah, lots of sand everywhere. That was actually a chance for the whip power, which we'll show later on. I mean, there's other places to get it. I just like having fighter for a while because it's so awesome. Yeah, you can see lots of sand spouts and stuff back there. It's kind of crazy if you actually take the time to look in the background. There we go. Couldn't do the attack. There's a whole lot of stuff going on. It kind of always is. It's just there if you actually, you know, take the time to look at it. Now we go down here, and there's a hidden room. I don't think there's anything special. Yeah, there's just a one-up. Uh, but this will be a good opportunity to showcase the whip power, so I guess we're going to have to get rid of Fighter for now. And um, you can see, um, I don't remember if Whip has been in any of the previous games or not. Um, this may be a new one for uh, this game. I'm not sure. But uh, basically, the whip power allows you to grab things that are far away. Um, if you hit this one up here, you can see you pull it right over to you. You might have been able to just inhale and grab that. But um, either way, that's what the whip is used for. We will need it for a couple of energy spheres, so it's good to get used to it. And it's not a bad power. The whip is fairly strong. Uh, the problem is you can't shoot it in all the directions you want. It's either like straight forward or up. So sometimes you can miss enemies that way. And you obviously don't get devoured by those things. And uh, here's a good chance we can grab the star, grab the hot dog. Don't know why there's a hot dog down there, but we'll go with it. Yeah, see what I mean? You can kind of miss enemies quite a lot, uh, just because it only goes straight out. Alright, there's fire. You can get fire from these guys if you'd like. Oh yeah, we got all these guys we're going to have to avoid. Or destroy, I guess it doesn't really matter. And then there's, <laughs> there's a Waddle Dee riding one. Alright, now here we want to obviously grab fire. You can probably guess this is like a fuse for a cannon at the end. It's a very long one. This one's like super easy. You can see it's got lots of twists and turns, so you got plenty of time to get in it. You can just sit here and dance. There we go. And there's an energy sphere here. And that should be the first one. Yeah, so at least I don't think I missed one. Yeah, that's the only thing with that fire attack, is it's very easy uh, to, you know, actually accidentally run into something at the end. Oh, it's just to get needle hollow. It feels like kind of a waste now. I wish I hadn't gotten rid of that. Yeah, that kind of borrows from wheel in a lot of ways, that attack there, but of course it doesn't last, you know, forever like wheel does. Alright, so here obviously we're going to have some boulders chasing us, but they're pretty easy to get around. Just run and jump. Don't need to worry too much about the enemies here. And you hit this one. You want to stay behind this one, but close enough. Uh, because there should be, I think, another one coming down here in a bit. Okay, well maybe I'm thinking of another one. Uh, yeah, it could be this one I'm thinking of. And the boulder is nice. Yeah, here it goes. Um, you want to stay in between these two. Um, otherwise, you won't be able to pick up an energy sphere at the end here. Actually, I guess you would still be able to. It wouldn't be anything preventing you from doing so. Yeah, okay. Well, I guess you could just stay back. Um, I know there are some later on that are like that anyway, so... Let's go and pick up sparks since it's here. We're going to have some giant boulders rolling down at us here, so just make sure to get out of the way. It's pretty simple. And if you have a power like Wing or a Fire that can do that dash, you can actually just go straight through those boulders and avoid having to wait for them, which is pretty nice. And again, why you would use it in a speedrun, so... Alright, got some more invincibility candy. It's always good. Let's just run through these uh, warthog-looking things here. Nice. I've, I've always loved these things. And we don't really need the healing, so let's just chop straight down. Uh, oh, here's Parasol. I guess we can grab this. Um, it works also generally the same as it did in Kirby Superstar. We've got the dash attack, and uh, if you jump, you can, uh, well, from high enough at least, you can actually float down like this. Which is, I don't know, kind of nice. It's helpful in a few select places, but really for the most part it doesn't really do a whole lot. I'm going to grab Whip here. Um, Parasol, from what I hear, is actually somewhat powerful, though, and can be pretty decent on boxes. So, I don't know. 
I got another mini boss here. This is Bonkers. Should be familiar with him. He looks a little bit different in this game, but you know he's still the hammer boss, so you know what to do. It's just sit here and keep whipping him. He's invincible while he does this, so I'll just jump over him. All right, and once it's done, we do want to grab hammer. Like I said, when you're going for 100%, you generally want to take powers from the uh, mini bosses. Grab some bananas here if we want. I used to know what those guys with the faces were called, but I don't remember. And anyway, there's another uh, energy sphere in there. You can destroy the green, uh, the gray blocks, rather, only with, like, powerful attacks. I'm pretty sure uh, the fighter's charge, like, Hadouken-type thing, will actually take care of it, too. Um, stone will do it, but I don't think there's a chance to actually get stone in that level, so... Um, hammer is obviously the best way there. Nice. Love the victory dance. Alright, so that's it for Stage 1. Now, Stage 2 is going to have uh, one, probably one of my favorite stage musics in the game. Um, it, I just always, for some reason, latched onto it. And yeah, you can tell uh, we got 15 Energy Spheres now, which is going to unlock Ninja Dojo, which is going to be uh, the first of the sub-games. I'll probably show those. I've only played those, like, once. But um, I don't know, one of them is actually really hard with only one person, because they're meant to be, like, for more than one person, you know? Oh, we can grab Sleep. I guess we can do this. Um, okay, it wasn't this song, by the way, that was one of my favorites, but here's Sleep. Yeah, that's Sleep. <laughs> it never was useful, but it's cool that it's uh, there. I mean, I, I like that, that they actually put the power in, um, even though it is completely useless. Oh, here's a new one. Uh, this is Water, which I believe is an addition for this game. Um, it's somewhat interesting. I mean, it works about the same as most of the powers do. This one's interesting, though, because you can kind of float with it. Um, you can, you know just control where you are in the air, which is interesting. Um, can help you out a bit. Um, there's also a unique run animation with it, and a pretty interesting attack. And, um, of course, when you're using water, you can um, run along on top of the water. Like that. Sort of surf. Oh, watch out for those things, though. Those do a lot of damage. The only thing about water is that it's a little bit slippery. Uh, when you try to do the run animation, you kind of slide for a while, and uh, it takes you a second to get going. Those things pretty much automatically make you drop your power. So let's get it back. Alright, here's stone. I'm pretty sure this is the first chance to grab that as well. It works just about the way you'd expect. You jump down on top of things, and there's a nice little, um, I don't know, podium or whatever for it. And you can use it here on hills, of course, to make your way down. Classic use of stone. And just destroy everything in your path. We've got some water here. Pick up whatever that drink that is, I guess. There's eight tons. Now, once we get here, you want to stop and make sure to head over to uh, this thing right here. You can hit this with stone and make your way down to a hidden door. And this should be uh, where our first energy sphere is. Now, some of these rooms, like this, um, are going to be kind of like puzzles. You're going to have to be quick with this one. Uh, basically, you want to drop down and then get running and then jump in order to make it on top of there. That's kind of just one you have to have done before. Um, it's no big deal if you mess it up, because you can just go back out and uh, just do this whole thing again in order to get back in. So if you miss the first time, it's no big deal. But um, that's one that's just slightly annoying, and you kind of have to have done before to know what to do exactly. All right, it may have been a different stage that had the music I was talking about, because it seems like this one just keeps going on. And yes, of course the water controls. We haven't really spent a lot of time in the water. Um, it's not too bad. Um, you just have to make sure that you're accurate with your... Because you can't shoot the bubbles diagonally either. It has the same problems Whip has. So, you know, just make sure you're accurate with it. Oh, nice. Uh, that that one there, I can't get it back you know, on command, but that was actually all the helpers from Kirby's Dream Land 3, maybe? I don't remember. Uh, it was the one that was on the Super Nintendo. And uh, it was kind of, like, crayon-y. It was <laughs> sort of cartoony, I guess. I don't know. There's not really another way to explain that. All right, now, there should be a hidden room down here somewhere. Just go underneath that thing. Those things are actually really annoying in this game because they'll make you lose your power basically automatically if you get hit by one of your shots. Uh, one of their shots, rather. And um, if your power drops in water, it automatically gets destroyed. So um, they can be really, really annoying. I basically just want to hit the top one there in order to make uh, the path clear. But um, obviously, if you hit the bottom one, all those enemies will get out, so you probably shouldn't do that. And I guess you can if you want, it's not that big of a deal. But... Alright, so let's make our way out. 
still got stone. I'm gonna look to change this before too long. Cause stone is all right, but it's a little bit slow. I got a star here. All right, now, ah, yes, we've got a lever to pull. We're gonna be seeing a few of these. Pretty self-explanatory, not that big of a deal. All right, now here we are going to be encountering, I believe, a completely different uh, superpower. Just make sure to avoid these flames. Uh, these flames do a lot of damage and will automatically make you lose your power, so you don't want to run into those. And of course, standing in them with stone will make you invulnerable. All right, now, as you can see, we're going to have a super version of the beam power. This is Flare Beam, which is somewhat interesting. It's uh, kind of the runt of the superpowers. Basically, you create this giant ball of energy above you, and you can sort of control where it goes with the control stick. And you can see things get destroyed. It has a lot of momentum, though. It can be somewhat difficult. It's actually controlled, you know, super precisely, but... And the hat is outrageous. Like, look how long those things are on top of it. <laughs> it's insane. So obviously we can use it here to sort of destroy uh, the stuff around the outside. You can see there's an Axum Tomato in there if you want it. And you can cancel the beam by pressing, uh, what is that, 2? Yeah, that's 2. I don't know. I don't remember. I consider it like A and B for some reason. Like A is the right one and B is the left one. That's all I think of it as. I don't really know which one's 1 and which one's 2. So basically, like, anytime you see these faces and other uh, environmental objects you can destroy, you want to do so because generally the portal you're looking for is going to be behind one of them, as you can see. So just make sure to destroy everything you can. I mean, that's not really a hard thing to do, because it's fun, but... <laughs> I got another one of these. Now, this one's going to have these floating cubes of water everywhere. I still don't know how this works. You know, I mean, they're not in a container, because you just go straight through them. But it's, for some reason, water works that way in the Kirby world, and it kind of always has, so it's just interesting. And yeah, but the enemies that aren't actually water-based will die immediately if they hit the water, so that's pretty good. There's a huge fish there. And nice to destroy that one. There's a banana back there if you're crazy enough to get it, but you can easily get crushed, so I wouldn't recommend it. Especially if you don't need it. Swallow some of this stuff and shoot our way through. Now, the stars move very slowly through water, so you may have to wait a bit if you're kind of wanting to take cover behind them, which can be a good idea. And through this door. Alright, so let's see. They're going to give us Parasol and Whip. Now, we'll use Parasol. We've used Whip on one of them before, so we'll use this. I kind of floated there for a second. There we go. We'll just kind of <laughs> gradually float in. Uh, it can be a little bit tough to use. Um, I'm not entirely sure what attack is like the most powerful one, but I mean, you can get some pretty good hits on him here. I mean, it's decently strong, at least. Oh, well, <laughs> didn't jump in time. And now, like I said, if your power hits water, it's instantly destroyed. So uh, now I'm going to have to do it the old-fashioned way. Hope he shoots out some projectiles and spit them back. But as you can see, he will. I believe you can actually swallow those and get fire as well, but I don't really remember. Oh, I didn't need to jump there. All right, come on, man. Give me something to hit you with. There we go. Oh, man. <laughs> that was actually kind of close. All right, so we get the last two energy spheres, and that completes them for stage 2-2. Two, two. Nice. Grab the tomato. And back we go. All right, so like I said, you're pretty much generally at the end of the stage when you find those. We got the little goal game here. That should be good, I think. Yeah. Alright, so hopefully stage three is the one I was thinking of. The cool music. It should be, I'm pretty sure. So there's the four for those. Looks like we've unlocked our first copy ability room. And it's nice that they kind of tell you what's already there. We've got Sword, Fire, Needle, Leaf, and Cutter. None of which I'm particularly interested in right now, so we'll just leave it. I usually don't use those anyway, because it's just so much of a pain to have to go all the way back out. Yeah, this is, this is the music I was thinking of. I don't really know what draws me to it so much, but I just like the way it sounds for some reason. And it fits the area really well, too. Yeah, and Parasol's pretty good here. 
uh, because you're going up most of the time, so it shields you from above. As you can see, he just kind of casually holds it above his head. So uh, it really helps if you, like, accidentally jump into something. I'm going to take the beam, though, because I kind of like it better. We can go down here. Nice, got another one up. Like I said, we're going to be getting a lot of those. See, it's like, I don't know what it is about this music. Like, it's nothing special, really. I mean, it's pretty easy to put together, but it just works really well. All right, now here we should, I believe, be introduced to another new power. Unless I'm thinking of a different part. No, I think I went the wrong way. Yep, see, there's one up over there. Oh, well. Okay, well, maybe that's a different one. But there are a lot of rooms like that where we're going to get another new power. Just keep making our way up. You can kind of you kind of get a little upward boost if you do that dashing jump attack. As you can see, you sort of get a, an extra you know little jump there. And of course, watch out for the giant cannons; those are insane. And now there's power here, which I generally don't like, but uh, I'll take it anyway just for the sake of showing it. This is tornado, uh, which can be tough to control. Uh, it doesn't look like it because I was just going in one direction, but if you try to like make a you know a somewhat tight turn, you can end up going all over the place. And there's one in here you can grab. I don't think you actually need it. I'm pretty sure there is an energy sphere here to get. But I don't think you actually need Tornado. You pretty much could have used anything that had an upward attack there. <laughs> yeah, as you can see, if you like hit the wall and bounce around, it's really annoying. So I'm really not a fan of this power, but I figured might as well show it. I mean, it can be nice if you're just going like directly up and to the right, you know, like I was there. But for the most part, it's just a hassle. Alright, here we go. Here's a new power. This is High Jump. Um, this is not new to the Kirby series, but it's not necessarily a popular power. Uh, basically, you just jump straight up. You can also, I believe, yeah, sit here and charge it and jump up even higher, like that. Um, you're, there's going to be a few sections throughout the game like this where it's basically just straight up and they're going to give you High Jump, which is pretty fun. And pretty easy to get Energy Sphere there. It's really hard to pass. Now, here you just kind of have to be a little bit careful and make sure you don't end up um, coming out of your jump right on top of one of those enemies. All right, obviously we're going to dump it. We're going to have a mini-boss here. Um, Cutter, I guess. I don't know. Cutter is a little bit weak in this game. I really loved it in Kirby Superstar. I mean, that was one of my favorite powers to use. But uh, in this one, it's slightly weak. The throwing animation takes a little bit longer. And I believe the uh, what it actually throws out is weaker. But you know, it's just we'll have to deal with it. Wait for some vulnerability to wear off. There you go. If you can start out with that combo, that does quite a bit of damage. I mean, it, it does decent amounts of damage, and you can do that dash attack to get through. Just watch out when he jumps up and does that. Right now, like I said, fight a mini boss, take its power, because you're probably going to need it, and I believe you do actually need this one. So we got some cannons here for some of some those. Grab this, yeah, because we're going to have to hit that bomb block in the middle there. I think Beam is probably the only thing that can do that, so you wouldn't need it there. It's Energy Sphere number three, so one more. And I like this part of the music especially for some reason. Right, we got a cannon section to go through here, so it's pretty simple. Um, I think we want to head up to the right here, though. Yeah, because there's a uh, there's going to be an Energy Sphere up here. And you can go back down afterwards, like if you went up through the middle and just saw that sphere, you can go back down afterwards, I'm pretty sure. So it's not like it's the end of the world or anything else. Yeah, so you can just shoot straight back down. So straight up and through him, we are done with this stage. Maybe a little late on that one? No, oh, well, just a little bit, but still made it. Actually, we're about to hit 20 lives already. We've only been playing for, what, like an hour? <laughs> Alright, so there's stage four. I don't remember exactly how many stages this one has, but it's not too bad. Uh, I guess we can go ahead and look. Yeah, see, this is the boss right here, so this is going to be the final regular stage. And uh, this one actually has a whopping five energy spheres. Usually if you see five, that means there is going to be a super um, ability at the end that's going to grant you your last two. So it's not too much to worry about. I know it seems overwhelming, but it's not too bad. 
All right, here's Bomb, the first chance we've actually had to get this. Now, Bomb, I'm actually actually extremely disappointed by in this game. I mean, it looks all right. I mean, it kind of works like you'd expect it to, but it's, it's slow and kind of hard to use. I mean, cause the bombs don't throw like they're supposed to, it seems like. It just seems like they move really slowly. And the hat is stupid. I hate the hat for Bomb. So it kind of sucks what they did to this power, but uh, I guess that's how it goes. All right, I'm going to keep it, though, because I think there might be something semi-useful you can do with it. And, of course, rolling bombs is all right on flat surfaces like that, but see, it's just slow, and it takes time, and I just don't really like it. Just stay up here and avoid everything, pretty much. In fact, um, okay, I don't remember if you actually need bomb uh, before you go in here. Uh, you might, I don't know, we'll see. Um, yes, you do. You actually do need Bomb to beat this one. It doesn't look like you would, uh, but you'll see as soon as you hit that, it basically goes straight back down, so you wouldn't really have time um, to actually get down there. So what you do is just drop a bomb by pressing down in the attack button, which is 1, I believe. That'll open straight up, and you can see you can just walk in and grab the energy crystal. So you do need Bomb for that one. Um, I, I can't think of anything. Maybe Beam if it was long enough to hit it, but I don't really know where you would get Beam at this point. Here we can just jump through. Um, I used to know what those guys were called. Scarfy, I think? If I'm not mistaken, somebody might correct me on that. Alright, now here we've got a dark section. I'm going to get rid of Bomb, by the way. I'm tired of looking at that hat. Um, so you can see, uh, we can just barely see in front of us. So you want to grab that candle to expand your uh, field of vision there. I'm going to grab Whip. Let's make our way through. We can grab that if we want. So we'll go on top. Most of these, uh, it doesn't really, uh, there is a dead end down there. And it looks like you can get that energy sphere right there, but you gotta watch out because there's an enemy at the end of the path. And the music here is actually really cool if you let it go on for a while. Uh, you'll probably get to hear most of it, but this is actually a really interesting theme, I think. Alright, we can grab the energy sphere there. That's number two. It, it is, it's just, I don't know, There's. It, it's cool. Like I said, the music in this game is really well done. That's one of the things I like about it, I think. Yeah, you actually carry the candle with you, but as you can see, when you're out in the bright uh, lights, it extinguishes, so you just throw it away. Hmm, okay, we, we're gonna need something, I think, to actually uh, clear that out. Um, I believe we're gonna be fighting a water mini-boss right here. Yeah, that's what I thought. Because uh, the water power can actually extinguish those fire blocks, and I'm pretty sure there's going to be an energy sphere coming up uh, that's actually behind one of them. Whip works pretty well on this guy because he stands still for the most part. Just make sure to watch out when he charges you. Uh, otherwise, it's no big deal. Alright, so as you can see, um, if you use water, you can pretty much just destroy these. Get in here if we want. Uh, there's a 1-up, which we don't necessarily need, but might as well get it since it's here. And there's life number 21. Alright, well, I'll just, <laughs> I'll just eat you then if you want to make me lose my power. I, I don't remember if you actually need it or not. I'm wanting to say you do. It could just be in this section. Watch out for the <laughs> giant flaming cannonballs there. Okay, oh yeah, this is actually a really interesting item. I like this one. Uh, you pick this up and it basically makes you transparent. And uh, there are certain walls you can go through that look like this. And you can just go straight through, which is nice. And we're going to need it if we can get out of here. Like I said, water is a little bit slippery sometimes. You can go through there and into this door and carry it on through. This does have a limited time use. It doesn't really look like it, but it will um, actually just break after a certain period of time, so don't take too long there, because you do need it to grab that uh, energy sphere. Right, so there's number three. Now, I'm guessing... I'm getting rid of this water. I'm telling you, I just don't like it too much to move around. I mean, it's a decent power. I mean, it's got some uh, pretty good strength, and it's not bad for bosses if you don't really need to make quick movements, but uh, just getting around in the stage, I find it to be a hassle. Sword, so we can cut these platforms down. I don't think it's necessary, but it certainly helps. Yeah, I think we're actually going to get a mega. F oh no, the sword. Okay, I couldn't remember if it was the sword or the flame. Here we go with Ultra Sword again. 
And uh, this time we can use Ultra Sword. Basically, whenever you see um, like these rows of stars here as on this rope, whenever you see something like that, you can usually do something with a superpower. And as you can see, this will actually cut the rope, even though it's in the background. It just kind of works that way, I guess. And uh, that'll help us get through here as well. Man, it never gets old. Just <laughs> like I've played this through so many times that I've used Ultra Sword, you know, like over and over and over again. But it just never gets old for me. It's really cool. All right, and we can of course destroy these things as we learned uh, in an earlier stage. So that helps. Got the rope here. And yeah, he chooses uh, just different random things uh, to actually act as the sword. Um, there's actually a rare one you can get every now and then. I hope we get it at some point during this playthrough. I'm not going to ruin what it is, uh, but it's really awesome. <laughs> right, so there's our portal that we're going to be going through, and that, of course, is going to get us the last two. Like I said, whenever there's five, usually the last two are gotten this way. Right, so let's just keep going through here. Don't really worry about the wall too much. I mean, keep moving, but there's no need to rush to the point where you, like, hurt yourself really badly, because any health that you... Um, lose during this stage, you don't get to recover before you fight Sphere Doomer, so uh, if you have trouble with those things, you probably want to take it a little bit more careful here. Yeah, they're not too bad. Okay, I guess we can just fall through that one. So we'll destroy that. Yeah, you gotta watch out for the giant cannon here. Just don't knock it down when it's shooting, because it will blast you right in the face as it falls. Also, we got to drop down and quickly get to the door. Again, you've got quite a lot of time. It even slows down as it gets close to you, so, you know, no big deal. Alright, so let's see what it's going to have us fight with this time. Uh, definitely Cutter. The sword is not good at range, and it's weak anyway, so that'd probably be a bad choice for this. Now, just watch out for those blocks down there. They like to throw in uh, random kind of environmental hazards in these fights. Uh, if you destroy those and fall down, you will die instantly, so... Just make sure you don't destroy those, basically. It could be easy to do with sword, especially if you're doing, like, the dash attack. There we go. Got a nice hit in there. Wow. <laughs> I don't know how he avoided all those, though. Come on, just like one more. Okay, there we go. So sorry, he's got through that one without taking a hit. He's usually pretty easy, and he just kind of does the same stuff every time, so it's not too much to worry about. Alright, so let's get back here and finish up the stage, and that's going to be also the last energy sphere for the entire second world, so it's good. And we'll probably get an extra life here. That one seemed alright to me. Yeah, let's, I don't know if I was early or late that time, but we still made it. Sweet, and there's the boss. Alright, level 2 energy spheres are complete. We've also unlocked the whip challenge room. And let's get to the boss. Alright, so let's see what kind of powers they present us with this time. I'm not sure if anything's really going to be... Yeah, those are kind of weird, like high jump, water, and whip. Those are kind of some of the stranger powers. Um, I'll probably go with whip, just because I, I kind of like it. It's a little bit faster than cutter, I think. So we're going to go with that one. But I couldn't imagine trying to use high jump on this boss. That would just, that would just be weird to me. And water would be a decent choice, though. Alright, so here's our boss. His name is Mr. Duder. I don't know. Don't ask me. But that's apparently what it says, so we'll go with it. Uh, the only problem with Whip is that this guy can sort of hover off the ground a little bit. Um, he doesn't really do a whole lot. Just watch out when he shoots these things. They're pretty easy to avoid. I mean, he doesn't have very good aim at all. And you can also destroy the skulls, so... Just make sure not to be underneath him when he lands. Pretty easy. <laughs> I mean, that's a super slow attack. And get his health to halfway, he enters the next form, which he basically just gets bigger. And you gotta watch out for a couple new attacks. Like this one, he'll always try to land on top of you. Just keep running back and forth to avoid it. No big deal. 
And if you somehow manage to lose your power, he does, uh, as you can see, kind of kick stars up from that attack, so you can use those. Uh, watch out for this, though. Uh, he can pretty much do that without warning, so you have to make sure to look for it. And there we go, took him down. Still a pretty easy boss, didn't even take a hit. Nice, so now it's got one of its wings. Looks a little lopsided now, which is <laughs> kind of strange, but that's how it goes. Alright, so he's going to talk to us. Uh, Starcutter has its right wing. Once we find all the parts, take you on a trip to visit my home world. I come from a distant land. I was at the end of an interdimensional tunnel. Of course, you know, that's always how it goes. It's really far away, but the lore is a beast, except for the fact that it fell apart. So yeah, there we go. That's basically, I mean, he doesn't really say a whole lot important, but we did get um, an offer to actually kind of, <laughs> kind of whip him a bit here. Uh, let's go back to his home world afterwards, so I guess that works. But uh, anyway, I think I'm going to leave off right here, and uh, next time we will take on the next world. I mean, it's not like there's a whole lot of uh, extra stuff to do in this game. It's basically just continue on to the end, so that's what we're going to do. Until then, thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you next time.